So what does it look like when there's dominator culture in the classroom? From Bell Hooks teaching critical thinking, and this is just the introduction, literally why she's writing this book. When I made my way to college, I was truly astonished to find teachers who appeared to derive their pleasure, their primary pleasure in the classroom by exercising their authoritarian power over my fellow students, crushing our spirits and dehumanizing our minds and bodies. I had chosen to attend Stanford University, a predominantly white college, primarily because the financial aid packages were better than those offered by black institutions, but I never once considered that it would be like what it would be like to study with teachers who were racist. Even though I had attended a high school with outspokenly racist teachers who were contemptuous and unkind, I had romanticized college. I believed it would be a paradise of learning where we would all be so busy studying that we never have time for the petty things of this world, especially not racism. I cited this because I had an experience of, I would say the 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 masculine mas how would you say the deep degendering of science. I was a biochem major at Oberlin College, and first year classes like first year chemistry and first year biology would be very multi would be large and very multi gendered. But as you advanced in the courses, the chemistry got more male and masculine. So shout out to my one classmate who went on to both study chemistry and now she teaches there at Oberlin. So <clears throat> I also want to acknowledge that something that by that Bell Hook says and here and that she acknowledges in the subsequent paragraphs is that we need more autobi autobiographical accounts of first generation of black students to enter predominantly white schools and colleges and universities. I also want to acknowledge those of us who entered those liberal arts spaces where there was open exchange and dialogue, including, I <laughs> think about it, Oberlin, because literally Bell Hooks um, um, taught here, literally leaving the year before I, until I entered there. So um, that's probably not unsurprising. And some of her books, she actually talks about that. But my experience, that is to say, was radically different from hers. And that's what also makes the threading of our experiences, of all of our experiences, so interesting to explore. Aside because when I say the degendering of chemistry, it happened from, I believe it was one of the very first lectures when the lecturer said, by showing us a life-size, well, not a life-size model, um, a huge model of a carbon atom this big, like out of Lego or something like that. And he said that men, are, males are better at imagining, at spatial recognition is what he was explaining than females and therefore learned chemistry more easily. And I found this so discouraging because what, what wasn't said was that, and so therefore we teach chemistry differently or we do anything differently or think of the world any differently because of the sexist notion that's inherent to science or that we've learned. Did they do that? Is for others to tell. We need more autobiographical work from women, and particularly women of color, in the sciences. Or from those who left the sciences, because I know there are many who left. And so I want to leave this with sending a shout out to also some of the other things that I did learn, including in the sciences. So first of all, shout out to Yolanda Cruz. What did she do and how did she teach differently? Well, when we had developmental biology, and one day after the class being exhausted from lab work and she was, wasn't was there to supervise, it's supposed to be unsupervised lab work, we decided that we were gonna feed the tadpoles. We, well, we didn't know we were feeding. We were gonna put the tadpoles from this experiment into the same aquarium as the frog, and the frog put all the tadpoles in her mouth and not that many came back out alive. I'll just put it that way. So this was a developmental class and rather than dealing with that as an authoritarian, <clears throat> um, she made us do some overtime, but also um, incorporate those findings into our learnings. There are other professors I would, in the sciences, um, Dr. Fuchsman, who would genuinely counsel students 
um, academically in his office hours um, as a peer and share with you his own journey and that you had professors in other departments, particularly I think this was more amenable in the humanities perhaps because um, there were more people of color, there were more um, presence of radical ideas than in sciences, but certainly um, I had the opportunity to also do a major in African-American studies and focusing on both history, writing, because you have to do a lot of writing um, at Oberlin, um, and so I did all those writing courses in Black Studies, as well as, unsurprisingly, Fine Arts, where I got to also um, learn, teach, and be an apprentice of artists and teachers. Wow. <laughs> um, more than once um, over years at Oberlin. And so the opportunities to do that in Black Arts, like literally to participate in the study of black arts and to be mentored in the study of black arts and to um, create black arts and to perform black arts. Um, in my case, dance at Oberlin College is just radical. There are people who are doing that in vocal performance, in um, theater, um, in, of course, obviously, we have an entire conservatory and in instrumentation. So I want to just use this video to send a sincere shout out to what Bell Hooks has always in her books, as you know, call, call upon us to do is to witness and give testimony to our experiences that we can understand both how she does it because she provides a roadmap of how to write uh, reflectively and critically and self critically self-reflectively. Um, and I want to acknowledge that there are spaces that have been transformed that are in processes of transforming that from 93 to 97, I it was one of the many people involved in transforming not only this campus, um, not only leaning on the shoulders of the um, OA to the fourth, our alumni association and people would come back and stand with us. But it also calls out to who we are in the world. And so I want to leave us with um, Michelle Obama's graduation speech and what she did in echoing Martin Luther King's graduation speech, speech there at Oberlin, which is also something that was echoed in my own graduation speech, which was Barney Frank in 97, is that we don't just go into these comfortable liberal arts spaces to there, then go out into the world and recreate these comfortable liberal arts spaces around us to live in a cocoon, rather that we use that space as a cocoon to then go out into the world, not as butterflies and die in seven days, but to be that liberated person in even the most difficult and most challenging and perhaps oppositional spaces. It is because of that that, as Bill Hooks acknowledges in this work, that if you are someone who is a radical feminist, I would identify as a radical feminist. Um, please allow my other videos to help me help you understand how I define that. And, and I've learned to define that for myself. But as a radical feminist, you will always be entering spaces that are untransformed by the notion of equity, of equality. And what does it mean to cultivate regularly to reiterate that one is not wrong in wanting us all to be kinder to each other because competition feels right, feels natural, it's all around us. And so I share this experience to share with you that yes, I am sort of saying there are spaces like Oberlin College that you should try to enroll in. Um, there are spaces, other spaces like this that I know that other people have grown to be empowered in and experience as being a student of color in such spaces that are predominantly white, as Bell Hooks also did, um, are also transformative. And we are continually teaching ourselves to transgress. And I hope you got that hint at the end.